we're going to be talking about extreme values and this is the first type where we're going to talk about local minimum and local maximum. Uh, later on, we'll talk about absolute uh, minimum and ac absolute maximum. But uh, the first uh, type of extrema, which is the plural for, for the minimums and the maximums here, will be local max. So a local max, really simple, is occurs when the derivative changes from positive to negative. So notice the small illustration that I've given you here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this first picture. Notice that the the slope of the tangent right about here would be positive and then the slope of the tangent here of course would be negative so it goes a local maximum the derivative goes from changes sign from positive to negative all right and at a local minimum well it just reverses notice the derivative here would be negative and the derivative here would be positive or the slope of the tangent would be negative the slope of the tangent here would be positive so this point somewhere down here, again, would be the local minimum. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples here where we can illustrate it first and then actually calculate it. So let's take a look. In this first example, they ask us to draw an example of a function having two local maximum and two local minimum in some interval uh, between A and B. So I'm just going to draw a sketch here, all right? Not very, not very scientific, all right? But just a, a, a basic sketch that will help illustrate this point. All right, so here's my sketch. All right, some kind of a curve here, right? Well, let's take a look here. I know that at this point, the derivative is zero, at this point the derivative is zero, at this point the derivative is zero, and at this point the derivative is zero. Okay, what can I say about this point right here? Well, I know that the derivative goes from positive to negative, looking at the slope of those tangents. Well, that right there is a local max and again right here my derivative goes again from positive to negative when we're talking about the slope of the tangent so these points right here these two points right here are going to be my local max now let's take a look at my next set of points well this right here and this right here well if I look the derivative or slope of the tangent goes from negative to positive, negative to positive. So this drawing right here satisfies the conditions of having two local max and two local min in some interval between A and B. All right, we've illustrated it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a, a problem that we can we can use, or a problem where we can evaluate this and, and find out where we can find those local extrema. So here's the example. Find the local extrema for the function f of x equals 6x to the fourth minus 40x cubed minus 72x squared. Well, looks kind of difficult, but it's really not that hard. Why? In this case, we're dealing with a polynomial. Again, polynomial continuous everywhere, differentiable everywhere, so that's pretty good for us. So what we're going to do is let's find the derivative. So let's go ahead and start off by doing that. All right. My derivative f prime of x will equal 24 x cubed minus 120 x squared minus 144 x. Okay, not too bad. I just need to find out, well, where does this derivative equal zero? Okay, because that's going to give me my points where my tangent is a horizontal line. Okay, well, the easiest thing to do here to solve or find the zeros is to factor. So if I pull out the GCF, the greatest common factor, which in this case is 24x, that's going to leave me with a very simple trinomial that I can factor. x squared minus 5x minus 6 Alright, again, all of these things are equal to zero. So in this first case, 
Well, this is basic. 24x equals 0. In this case, x equals 0. Okay, not too bad. This right here is a very simple trinomial that I can factor. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with factoring at this point, I recommend you go and look up my videos on the box method of, of factoring, and that'll help you out. But otherwise, I'm just going to factor it very quickly. The factors here become x minus 6 times x plus 1. And here are my factors. Okay? Very simple. So in this case, x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. All right. So these, of course, are going to be my critical values, but I need to figure out, well, which one is a minimum, which one is a maximum, and, and that's what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw a line, and, and this is pretty customary uh, when you're seeing problems like this. So they draw a line, and it's kind of like a line graph, and, and it represents the derivative. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to mark my points on here. So I'm going to, of course, put my negative 1, I'm going to put my 0, and I'm going to put my 6. And what I'm going to do here next is that you can plug in values into the derivative. All right, You're going to want to pick values that, are, that come before negative 1, after negative 1, but before 0. Um, values that are after 0 but before 6 and then values that, that come after 6. So all we're going to do is determine the sign of those numbers. Okay, well you can plug them in straight forward and find those answers, the signs, or you can take a look at this on your graphing calculator. That's another trick you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that on my calculator without showing you, but we plug this in on the calculator, the numbers that come before negative 1 well, their sign is negative. Okay. Now, the numbers that come in between negative 1 and 0, well, their sign happens to be positive. Numbers that come between 0 and 6, their sign happens to be negative. And, of course, numbers that come after 6, their sign is positive. So, this is going to be quite interesting. Again, remember that this little chart here represents the derivative and, and notice how our function kind of goes like this. Well, that is interesting to note. All right, remember this is the derivative here that we're talking about. So when we're looking at the point where x equals negative 1, notice the derivative goes from negative to positive. Again, from negative to positive. Hmm. That seems to tell me that that might be a local minimum. Okay, well, let's continue. Now look at zero. Well, the, at zero, the derivative goes from positive to negative. Again, it goes from positive, a positive slope, to a negative slope. That leads me to believe that that's a local maximum. Now let's look at six. Well, at six, it goes from negative to positive. Once more, it goes from negative to positive. The slope of that tangent goes from negative to positive. So it should be fairly clear at this point what what our local minimum and local maximums are. All right, we have, actually have two local minimums. And let me pick a different color to, to jot this down for you. All right, so we have local min we have local minimums at x equals negative 1 and 6. All right. And again, you're going to need to justify your answer. So please do write this down. I'm not going to put it on the page here uh, for room because of space. But it go negative 1 and 6 because the derivative goes from negative to positive at these points. And the next thing that I'm going to jot down for you, let me pick a different color here, is the local maximum, the local max. And this occurs again at x equals 0. And this is the only local max. Now our justification here that you would write down is that the derivative goes from positive to negative 
at the point where x equals 0. So that is the justification. So don't forget the justification uh, uh, for these critical value, these, these not critical value rather, but uh, local extrema. All right, that's important to note when you're working on these problems. Made with DoodleCast Pro.